Hello everybody, today we're going to take a look at the workflow for taking your character from Character Creator to the Unity Game Engine. I should mention that this requires the pipeline edition of Character Creator. So let's get started. Here's my character, Jack Lumber, who is, as the name suggests, a lumberjack. Everything about him comes from the standard assets uh, that come with Character Creator, with the exception of the hat, which I modeled in Maya. Now that my character has been created, the first step is to go to File, Export, FBX, Clothed Character. Under the Target Tool Preset drop-down, I will pick Unity 3D. And I will click the uh, Delete Hidden Faces checkbox. When I click Export, this pop-up will appear. If you click on the More button, it will take you to a link where you can download the auto setup for Unity. While not absolutely necessary, it will make the import process in Unity easier. So I'm going to make a new folder to export these assets to. This folder will contain more than just the mesh and skeleton of my character, but will also contain all of the textures. I'll give my export a name. and I'll complete the process. And now that it has exported, I'll switch over to Unity. Before continuing, I would just like to mention that I'm using an asset that I downloaded from the Unity store called the Third Person Controller and Fly Mode. I apologize if I don't pronounce the name correctly, but it is offered for free by Vinicius Marcus, who not only provides this really amazing resource free, but also uh, provides really excellent documentation for how to use it. You want to get your character up and running very quickly in a game engine to see how it looks? This is a great resource. So returning to Unity, the first thing I'm going to do is find my folder uh, with all the exported assets in it. Bringing your assets into Unity is as easy as drag and drop. I'm going to select the folder with all its contents and just drag it into Unity. Unity recognizes that my assets use normal maps and ask me if I want to fix the materials. I'll click the Fix button so that it, uh, so that it will use my normal maps appropriately. Now, if I open up my folder, I'll see my character. And there's just a little setup that I need to do. With my character selected, I'll go to the Inspector. And under Animation Type, I will change it to Humanoid. I am going to use the standard Four Bones Skin Weights, so I will hit Apply. And I will also click on the Configure button. With characters I've created in Maya, I typically have to do some remapping of the joints for animation purposes in Unity. But with Character Creator characters, I haven't had that problem. Everything looks good here, so I'll scroll down to the bottom. And I will click on Done.
Bringing my character into the scene is as easy as drag and drop. And with my character now in the scene, I'll return to the inspector where I will start to do some setup so that the character will be a player character. I need to apply an animator controller. Clicking on controller, I get this pop-up. So I select character controller. An animator controller is an animation tree. Here we can see the different animation states and the connections among them. Animation trees can be quite powerful for transitioning between animation states. For my character to work, I also need to apply a rigid body. And to do this, I will go to Add Component, Physics, Rigid Body. Under the rigid body, I'm going to go to Constraints, Freeze Rotation, and I will check X, Y, and Z. This will keep the character from falling flat on his face. In addition, I will apply a mass of 70 to my character. The next component I want to add is also under Physics, and it is the Capsule Collider. Rather than calculating collision for the animated mesh itself, it'll be much more efficient to use a capsule. This will keep my character from falling through the floor or walking through walls. In the inspector, I can make adjust adjustments to this capsule to make it better fit my character. I will now start attaching the scripts to my character. Once again, I will go to Add Component, but this time to Scripts, where I will add the Basic Behavior script. Notice that the Basic Behavior script has a field called Player Camera. I need to create a camera for my player. I'm going to rename my camera to My Camera. I will once again select my character. And I will drag the camera into the player camera field of the script. There are three more scripts we need to attach to our character. So I'll go through these steps one more time. Add component, scripts, and this time I will add the move behavior script. This is the script that will control the player's walk and run speed, their jump height, etc. I will also add the aim behavior basic script. And finally, the fly behavior script. We're almost done. Now I will select my camera because I need to apply a script to it as well. Once again, I go to Add Component, Script, and I will apply the Third Person Orbit Cam Basic. I need to tell the camera to use my character, so I will drag my character into the player field of the Third Person Orbit Cam Basic script. And with my character selected, I will do one more thing, I will tag it as player. I'm now ready to try my character out. If I hit the play button at the top of the interface, I can now run around the environment with my character. One thing I notice is that there's a strange transparency issue on my character's shirt and jeans. To be honest, I haven't figured this one out yet. So here's how I'm going to deal with the issue. If we look at my materials for the character, if I select the materials that the character is using, the shirt for example, as well as the jeans, I notice that its properties are locked. Until I figure this out, my workaround is to create two new materials. I will create a material for the shirt and another one for the jeans. 
With my shirt material created, I will rename it. And I'll create my second material for the jeans. And I will rename it as well. I'll quickly move the camera so that it is not uh, in the way. With the jeans material selected, I will go into the inspector and I will apply the gene texture to the albedo map. I just need to first find it. And there it is. With the texture now applied, if I look at it, it looks like there's a little too much specularity on it. I'll bring down the smoothness and that'll eliminate the specularity on the genes. And I will also apply the genes normal map to that field of my material. And there it is, looking much better. Now onto the shirt texture. I will drag my material onto the shirt mesh and I will go through similar steps to the jeans. I will find the texture for the shirt and once again I'll bring down the smoothness so that it doesn't have the specularity and I will apply its normal map. Rather than a red textured shirt, it comes out white. If I find the color swatch to the right of the albedo cha uh, channel, I can change it to red or any other color that I desire. Now I can have fun running my character around the environment and testing it out. Movement of the character is controlled with the W, A, S, and D keys. The space bar will make the character jump. and the F key will make the character fly. When I'm done flying, I merely press the F key again. If I wish to run faster, I can hold down the W key uh, along with the Shift key. And using the right and left mouse buttons, I can switch uh, shoulders and view. Whether you've created your character in Character Creator, Maya, or some other software, it's very gratifying to be able to take your character into a game engine and run around with it. I hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.